So you say that how much better can Lincoln Riley get? And the answer is pretty much two games better, right? So I guess if he can get those two games better, then uh, then they could get better recruits. So at this point, he I think that realistically he's doing about as good as you can do success-wise uh, coaching football. So to answer your question, it's like he's just got to be a better recruiter. He's got to be – he's got to do more. I've had this longstanding take that, one, you can grow your own five stars in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Two, that – if you want to win a national championship, you're going to have to get inside the top five in two, four, seven team composite recruiting rankings, and you're going to be at the top ten at a minimum. Mm-hmm. Most people would say you can't do both of those because okay. rankings are the rankings, right? And the ranked recruits are the ranked recruits. To which I say Creed Humphrey was slotted as a first-round draft pick, and he's returning. He's from Shawnee. Mm-hmm. He was not a five-star kiddo coming out of high school. So both of these things can't be true. But... If one of them is tr- is true, how do you how do you end up as Clemson winning a national championship? You recruit all the best defensive linemen and the best quarterback. That's pretty much what I was about to say. You get yeah. as many five stars on your D line and uh, at quarterback as you can. They have six five stars in the twenty twenty class. Mm. Six and three of the top six defensive linemen in the class. That's stupid. No, that's that's the best way to go ahead and win a football game. They they have three of the top they six say, defensive linemen and the best pro style quarterback. Absolutely, they do. Wow, coaches are nice, girls are pretty. Is there a story about it? Nope, that's it. I think we've. Mm. I, I was about to say we we we've definitely run into an, enough people, and you have enough stories to fill up many volumes about. Oh wow, it was crazy. They did this. And they hung out at my at my house, and then the, they they locked us in, and this, that, and the other. People that go to Clemson is basically, yeah, it's nice. But that's all it's got to be. I know. So uh, DeAndre Hopkins went to like, Clemson. How, how do you like? There's there's none of this like really cool SEC violating drama that happens whenever recruiting is that Clemson just kind of shows up. Georgia. Door. Oh, is Georgia just a real nice place to play? I mean, Georgia, recruiting Georgia. violations. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Recruiting violations. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so like the, the story of like, how does Clemson become great? Well, when they recruit people and also the recruits just kind of want to go there. They want to get to the league. They want to get to the league. Mm-hmm. Like I hear that the most from kids. Who's going to get me in the NFL? Clemson seems to be a real good, so, real good place to do that. So LSU put together this really, 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 really great defensive class. Mm -hmm. And my favorite part of it is the kind of defensive backs they got. One of which is probably the most polished in the 2020 class. He's like six foot two, six foot three, Mm -hmm. 210, safety, named Elias Ricks, committed last Christmas. Stayed put, stayed silent, really great player. Another one that kind of slipped everybody was Dwight McGlovin. Dwight went on Nash TV, broadcast Nash TV, mm-hmm. all America Bowl, and was so overjoyed to be saying that he's going to play at LSU. It's like over the moon. Mm-hmm. And people were like, oh, no, man, you, you four-star, but you, are you that good? Is you that good? Picked off two passes in all America Bowl and took one back to the house. Yeah, say, so, hey, hey, am I good now? So that on top of there were three all pro selections from LSU, all three mm-hmm. played defense back. And they got the Thorpe Award winner play at safety. Could you pick another place to say, as a defensive back, that place going to get me into the league? No, not right now. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. Which is also what brings me to the idea that if Alex Grant were to leave, take, say, the Washington State job, mm-hmm. I would want to go get Corey Raymond to be my defensive coordinator. Corey Raymond is the cornerbacks coach at LSU. Okay. They got a safeties coach, too. But I don't know that I want Bill Bush. Yeah, no, that would, that would be a, a great get. <laughs> okay. Okay. And uh, if you bring in that style of play, man, you know, getting those press, th- getting those style, th- those type of players, there you go, into, into that area, there you go. Yes, they could do some damage. Could do some damage, man. So all the smoke that I that I look, I regret nothing, but I spent the entire week just yelling about OU and Oklahoma and Louisiana and LSU, mm-hmm. and I was all in people's feelings. Uh, they were very upset with me on the Twitters and on the YouTubes. They're passionate. They got they got a, a love in their hearts for their for their schools. Uh, I can't imagine you were saying anything too bad. Hmm. Basically, basically what we said on the podcast last week. That was mm-hmm. it. Okay, that was all. Yeah, no hurt feelings, right? Yeah, nah, not, not, not. 
So, last thing that I actually wanted to get to before before we might shut it down, right? Okay. Other because I think we touched on most everything that I wanted to talk about this week. Oh, hmm. Baylor head coach. Oh, who would I want as the Baylor head coach? Yeah, seeing as Joe Brady ain't going to take the job. Joe Brady just signed a, a agreement to an extension. My man was making four hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thirty-five thousand dollars in February twenty nineteen last year. Mm-hmm. By February this year, he's gonna be making a million. Okay. Three years, three million dollars, and basically what the what the gig does is not only keep him at LSU as an assistant, mm-hmm. but kind of sort of prevent him from taking another assistant head coach or assistant job or college job. To which I'm going, oh, okay, so y'all was just really just trying to get him up out of here so he couldn't take the job at Baylor. Okay. And it doesn't seem like he want to be a head coach. I mean, it takes it takes a very particular type to want to be the guy and be to be to, the man. <laughs> Got to beat the man to be the man. Yeah. Uh, who would I want to coach at Baylor? Are we being serious right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is what I'm thinking. Freaking who's left? So you have a coach who is. Has just lost a job. Mm. It's out there on the market, mm. needing to go ahead and prove that they are not, that he is not as bad as as they say he is, and has a chance to uh, not only redeem his name, but also maybe clean up the program a little bit or get get rid of uh, even more of the of the art brows that was that's still like you know under the couch and, mm-hmm. and yeah. And maybe go ahead and reach the same positions that he had before. I think Uh-oh. a great pick Uh-oh. for Baylor is Jason Garrett. He gets to go ahead and, and clean up his, his reputation in the same state that they think that he's trash. List Baylor up to heights that uh, maybe get him to a playoff game, maybe win a playoff game. And then, I don't know. <sighs> your maybe, face says maybe, you don't believe what maybe you're get saying. his job back in Dallas okay it like it could work out okay. I'm just saying think okay think about it okay Kevin Wilson that's fine too Kevin Wilson why Kevin Wilson because Kevin Wilson has succeeded in this conference before Kevin Wilson will run an offense that fits with the personnel you can recruit around Central Texas okay Kevin Wilson will probably be able to get you a prototypical and decent defense coordinator to come along with him might even give Mike Stoops mm-hmm. the second opportunity that he really wants to get mm-hmm. the band back together I've also put together the list that says like Josh Heupel from, mm-hmm. you know UCF because same same difference with Kevin yeah no Wilson, I, I saw right? your spreadsheets right there you go so Kevin Wilson also has been to the college football playoff and Nash national championship game. That's true. Okay? Mm-hmm. You know, and he also has been in Ryan Day's back pocket, learning how he does it while coaching tight ends, mm-hmm. putting together passing game coordinated concepts. But he's also kind of said, look, uh, I was up for the job at Colorado State, but I had to make sure that it was the job for me. Steve Adazio apparently said, it is the job for me. I need a job. I, I want to work. Because mm-hmm. they went from one Urban Meyer disciple to another in kind of, a roundabout way, Jeff Halfley, because Ryan Day to Jeff Halfley, Jeff Halfley to Boston College. Boston College just loves it, some Urban Meyer tree. Mm-hmm. But there's another guy that I would be like, yo, Urban, how much would it take for you to run, you know, power spread at Baylor? And then you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's right. You would get us in trouble. Damn. <laughs> don't know that we can do that. Don't, don't, don't know that we Definitely can Definitely got to worry about that. Yeah. Thank you for this. Uh, no problem. You know, first off, you realize that I'm only here to drag down like your 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 weekly average videos by like one to two thousand views per uh, minute. So, um, thank you for letting me like creating your program. Like, it's it really means a lot to me. As long as we create it in style. All right. Let's let's go cut the nuts off of a of a bull. Go play Texas. This is so weird. Gosh, this is. I don't know let's, why I come over here. Let's go do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm with it. All right, let's get out of here. Bye.